afternoon everybody. Nice hot day here in Brisbane. Tuesday the 19th of December 2017 and uh, uh, right away you'll say oh well you've discussed some of this before and we know your views on this or that and so on. And, uh, it, that's partially true. Now um, I I really am, in a sense, addressing this to a number of people, friends, uh, who uh, some of them are Christians. I'm deliberately aiming at several Christian friends, and I'm aiming it at uh, several uh, non-Christian friends. They would call them atheists, or you'd call them uh, agnostic, or in one case, my friend Steve Protoni in Adelaide, you call him human. Humanists, I think they call themselves. Now, I don't necessarily agree with uh, some of the doctrines and the ideas and things that we're. Well, I'm not going to be discussing all the ins and outs of everything now. But uh, having read that book, uh, Christians and Evolution, I mean, uh, some people might be shocked and dismayed to think, well, how, how is it you, uh, you didn't know these things already, you know, you, you went to school, uh, you went right through to high school, you know, I did a couple of years in high school and so on, I went out to the workforce and all the rest of it, <coughs> married and had kids and now grandkids and so on, and you, and you think that uh, you're a Christian, which I am, uh, here's where I see both Christians and non-Christians have a real problem in this, shall we say, in this whole whole region of, of matters, of, of uh, belief and uh, facts, let's say, uh, and evidence and so forth. It's really important to look at actual evidence rather than saying, I believe such and such happened, and I believe so and so. Like uh, some some Christians, or you know, thousands, if not even millions, have taken on this uh, young Earth uh, uh, belief that oh well, you know, the Earth is really only a few thousand years old, and and the scientists have made mistakes. Uh, you know. Uh, uh, there's fossils and there's no transitional fossils and all that sort of thing and, and I even scoffed a, a fair bit of it. Ah, oh, you know, show me the the fossils leading up to the platypus was one of my standard uh, replies. And then, uh, uh, so I just, let's say, I just said, oh no, well, I'm a Christian, I just accept what it says in the Bible. But the problem is, I read a book, as I said, called Christians and Evolution. Now, it was 18 very well-educated Christians, people who, whether we're talking about physicists, professors, uh, a marine biologists, and a variety of other people, and, and their backgrounds are mostly uh, evangelical, but some of them might be uh, Catholics and other um, Christian faiths. And they concluded that evolution was and is true, correct. Now, uh, not one of those people who wrote the book uh, ceased their Christian faith. They just simply said, well, evolution is true. So the conclusion that a person, when you think about it deeply, let's say, and, and, and you know, I'll ask questions all the time, is, well, probably God created evolution. Now, for some people, uh, oh, that'd be uh, a, a no-no. You're not supposed to talk about that. You're supposed to believe in six days of creation and so on. I say that it's a parable. Now, for some people, they'd be shocked. Oh, no, it's not a parable. It's history. It's Oh, God created the earth. And then, if, if you look into Genesis, then he created the stars like an afterthought, you know, oh, uh, I'll, I'll create the lights in the air, you know, the stars. I'll put, throw out the moon, I'll throw out the sun, there's all the stars, away you go. Now, 
uh, for some people who would call fundamentalist, that would mean if they take every single word of this to be true, well, the Earth is, uh, in that case, the centre of the universe. And it was more or less taught that way, and the Flat Earth Society kind of exists even to this day, which is laughable. Uh, but, oh no, the Sun went round the Earth, a Flat Earth, let's say, and, and, and that's, why, that's why we have sunrise and sunset and all this. Well, we found out a long time ago that the Earth is a, uh, a globe, let's say, it's cir basically circular globe, and that we we travel around the sun. Now we know all this. I don't. I don't think there's any. There's all you know. Any question that would say, oh no, it's not true. So we get past all of that, and then some of them stubbornly say, oh no. Uh, I believe in the Bible and what it says there in Genesis and everything. Oh, it's right, six days. And God can do what he likes. Well, I, I agree. God can do what he likes. He could have done and can continue to do what he likes. But it doesn't work out. The six, six days of, of creation just doesn't work. Not because it's not enough time or anything like that. Because some of us say, oh, well, God can create what he likes in six days and so on. That's true, but the way it is written is as if the Earth is the centre of the universe. I return to that theme. It is not. It is a it is a planet a planet on a in a solar system that's out towards the edge of one of the galaxies, and the galaxy is a very very ordinary common galaxy in the universe and now they've discovered other other galaxies uh, and only within the last 15 to 20 years they discovered they've got planets around some of the stars that was only a fairly recent uh, uh, discovery and oh wait a minute we're, we, we can, we're getting some telescopes we're getting some uh, uh, well, the Hubble telescope for example and there's another one to come and a few more years from now be launched and, and we can see 11 billion years, light years, that is, away from the Earth. So, who really is going to argue with the speed of light at 186,000 miles a second? And the calculations, I don't, I'm not a scientist, I don't understand how to calculate distances uh, other than the Moon or something. You could say, well, you bounce uh, radio waves off the Moon, and Tesla did that in the 1890s. The speed of sound is constant. You figure out, you know, you beam by light and it bounces, bounces back, and you say, ah, the moon is 250,000 miles. It was pretty accurate, by the way. Those early measurements were pretty right. They're only a very small percentage out. And then they calculated all these galaxies and everything, that's where they are. Is anybody out there now going to say, uh, those scientists are completely wrong. The, 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 the galaxies that they can see are not 11 billion light years away. Is that what anyone's going to say? I'd like to see someone make a comment and say, no, it's not true. So you show me, basically, as a layman, how that, that calculation is wrong. And if you consider that it is right, 11 billion light years means it took 11 billion years for the light to reach Earth and beyond and for us to see anything. You need light to see, right? So if something's 100 million light years away, it's only a nearby star, well, then you'd say, well, it took 100 million years for the light to reach the planet. So people who talk about a young Earth and some fundamentalists would say, oh no, the world is only 6,000 years old. For some reason, they constantly repeat this figure. 6 to 10,000 years. And that means the universe is 6 to 10,000 years old, by the way. So here is the real fundamental problem. I, and that's the very reason I have for making this video. I read the book and remain a Christian, just like all the authors who wrote the book. I've loaned the book to our son-in-law Andy and I've said this is extremely interesting and, 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 and 
well worthwhile book to read. And any Christians out there, by the way, any person who's not a Christian out there who can get hold of that book, it costs about the same as a meal at a fast food restaurant, $17. You do not skim it. You don't read a little bit here and a little bit there, a little bit there, so oh, no, you know. You've got to read it from cover to cover, and it's I got it from a Christian bookshop, the Kurong Bookshop in Brisbane. I was actually, well, frankly, I was looking for something that might interest my non non Christian friends. Oh, Christians and evolution. Here's people, highly educated scientists, who can say, oh, this is why evolution's not right because of this and this and this. It was not so. It was exactly the opposite. They all said, yes, it is right. And one of them said, I held transitional fossils in my hand of a creature part way between one species and another. And this is something that I would have scoffed at, and many people today, still today scoff at. But he had experienced it. So I think here's where the problem is that Christians or some fundamentalists say, oh no, uh, the Bible's the word of God, that's the end of the matter. Uh, it's right from cover to cover and okay, there are some parables because Jesus told parables and oh, you know, I understand that. Prodigal son and uh, the lost sheep and the lost coin. We know all those things. That's to teach people who were very lowly educated for almost no education it, some people describe them in today's terms as being thick. You draw a picture literally and you tell people stories and they can pick up what you're talking about. I think that the six days of creation is basically a parable. Put there for the very early men and women, the civilizations to try and understand where they came from and then have a and God have a relationship with them and so forth. And I think that the most brilliant thing that God now seems to have been uh, that have done is, is create evolution because he could have done this thousands of times in, in, in the universe, if not a million times. And he'd know because of his design of uh, evolution that s certain creatures would develop in a particular way and then finally there'd be intelligent life on a huge number of planets and he'd have a relationship with those beings that live on that planet. He's done that with Earth and he's done it with others, other civilizations I have no doubt uh, in the, throughout the universe. Now uh, I've covered also subjects that my friends like John Edwards, for example, uh, never accept, uh, and that's uh, aliens. And I said, well, you, you, you're shortchanging God, you're, um, uh, you're indicating that there's an empty universe, and other, other friends, our pastor, Tim Sparks, says he, he subscribes to the uh, empty universe uh, doctrine, if you like it. No, no, there's only God, there's us, and everything else is empty. So God wasted uh, his energy, as it were, building a universe for this em that is empty. I find that, uh, sorry to have to say, guys, but laughable, actually. Insulting is the right term for it. And I think that they've overcome travel. In other words, time. They're able to... We, uh, some people have heard the, the theory, the string theory, where... If you took a, an A4 sheet of paper and you put a dot on one side and a dot on the other, he said, that's 100 million light years apart, those two dots. You fold them in half, and suddenly they're next door to each other. So they've overcome travel. In other words, they've gone many, many times faster than the speed of light. They're able to go for skip from one part of a galaxy to another in no time at all, rather than impossible amounts of time. And then we've got more and more and more discoveries of uh, the evidence of not only UFOs, some, some being uh, interstellar craft or coming from interstellar craft, actually talking about motherships letting these smaller craft out, and sightings even of motherships that really, I suppose, shouldn't be, uh, have been in the atmosphere in the first place, but they've got 
good accounts of them. And one of them, uh, if you these days it's very handy to go on YouTube and find these things out. But there's one called uh, and Phoenix. Look up the Phoenix lights. There was more than lights. What happened? Even including right up to the to the mayor of the city, out in his yard for argument's sake. And suddenly a craft, a size of an aircraft carrier. It was just utterly huge. It was much larger than, larger than say, a 747 or whatever, a large aircraft. This was gigantic. Flew over the city of Phoenix in the 1990s, very slowly and without sound, just drifted over the city. And they could stand there in their yard or in the street and say, oh, look at that, will you? This gigantic thing went past them. And I think the number of incidents uh, linked up uh, proved that it actually occurred. And of course, you've got much more evidence around. And I'm not going to go into all the stories here now of uh, uh, not only UFOs, but alien, uh, because it's just too daunting for some people to hear, in a sense. Uh, but same goes for my uh, uh, non-Christian uh, friends. I've told stories in the past of, in my case, of a near-death experience, and this sort of thing has happened thousands, if not probably millions of times, and there have been many stories where there are a series of people witnessing uh, the events, and I've told that story, or more than one story, a series of them in the past, and yet it seems very strange that no matter how much evidence there is of something, some people will never accept that evidence. I've mentioned, for example, uh, the Westall High School UFO incident in 1966, and it was uh, fascinating. I remember it as a kid when it all occurred. Two, two discs came down and landed right behind the school, and a kid jumped the fence and nearly touched it. He was only one foot away from it. It was very hot. They flew slowly away, but then they zoomed up into the sky, you know, about a 45 degree angle, and gone. Now, two to three hundred students and teachers saw that, broad, broad daylight, they said, all school was over, because there was no more teaching of anything when that incident occurred. So I assume it was two o'clock, two thirty in the afternoon, and just blew everyone's mind to see all that. And they did a program. I look it up on YouTube. They did a program 50 years after the event. Those people are all in their 60s like myself. It occurred at, at that time. I, I was, for example, uh, I can tell you, I was uh, 14 years old because 19, I was born in 1952. So 62 is 10. 3, 4, 5, 6 is 14 years old. You know what I mean? So, six, so these people are now, they're around 66, 67 years of age. And they swear by the fact that these, this, this incident, an uh, incredible incident, did occur. And then there was a case of uh, 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 gigantic aliens, about nine foot tall aliens that got out of a craft in Russia in 1989. And there were huge numbers of witnesses. They fixed the craft up. There was a robot thing with them or something. Luck if it happened today, everyone would have their, their, their cell phone out and making movies of it. But they did drawings and they gave accounts. There were school parties there and everything. They, everything was proven beyond a shadow of a doubt to have occurred. There are far, far too many to discuss now and to worry about in a sense. But I'd say uh, to my friends that this mistake being made is that atheists say, oh look, uh, evolution, that proves there is no God. That proves the Bible is completely wrong. I, I say, sorry guys, that is not so. Yes, I would question some, some things that I would see in the Bible, but I would say, once again, it is a parable on some of these things that you can't understand. It seems by today's understanding to be impossible, as it were, it is a parable. But I would say that God has created evolution. Now, I welcome comments, by the way. I welcome questions. And I would say that if I've sparked a, little, a bit of an interest here, I'd be happy that if people went and got books or DVDs 
or searched um, YouTube or other places for answers to this whole issue. And then they concluded that, yeah, well, God exists. And so uh, evolution was true. Put the two together, he must have, he must have uh, created evolution. And he may have done it thousands of times throughout the universe. And we know there are various species of aliens that are reported time and time again to occur. So I won't go into that one now because some of you know that that is true. You research that and you say, oh, it's, been, it, it's true. There's been a lot of incidents and a lot of cases where uh, these things are completely correct. So I wanted to uh, raise this and very often with friends, as I said, uh, whether we're talking about more, uh, atheist friends or whether we're talking about Christian friends, a uh, conversation with them is often fleeting. It's like if I'm talking, if I'm talking to uh, John Edwards, it might only be a few minutes here or there whenever I see him. Uh, often at some events or whatever, and it's not really appropriate to sit down and talk about these issues in great depth. And uh, the same goes for Tim Spark. Is, is another is our part one of our pastors at the uh, our church um, in Collingwood Park. At, uh, uh, Woodlink School we have every Sunday. Uh, you just haven't got the time to sit down and discuss and provide the information or the spark, as I say. What I'd like to put it to you is this. I have loaned or given, effectively given, uh, a book to... Uh, for a couple of our family members, um, Brett Groves is one and, and Mark Simpson is the other. I gave a book to them I called The Case for Christ by Lee Strobel. I thought it was a brilliant book, well written, uh, very convincing in, in its outcomes and, and, its, and the way it delves into every aspect of uh, Christ. He was a uh, hard-bitten newspaper reporter in Chicago he tells his story it's on YouTube it's on the we've got a movie on it a DVD it was a Hollywood made movie of his of his life story on these things uh, and he was completely convinced to the point where he's now a pastor at one of the biggest churches in the United States so uh, a person who is a total atheist turned into a pastor after seeing all the evidence so I'm providing that to people. I, I know, for example, that if you give them a book, I know that those, that book has not been read. And I'd like them to defy me and say they have read it because I don't think they have. They should pick it up now and read it and then make a decision based on what they read. Same as I'd say to my Christian friends, more or less, in closing on the subject, pick up that book from the Kuron bookshop called Christians and evolution. Read it from cover to cover. Make your own mind up on what they conclude. It's a fascinating story. I was so taken by the whole thing that I did make what you could call as a sort of a book review on it, but I'm saying it again here now, and I would be happy to hear from people uh, on their opinion on what I have to say and we add to the discussion. So thank you very much for viewing.